Welcome back to week five of the uh, No, I shouldn't call it the Welcome back to week five of the Fantasy Football in Madden 2022. Uh, taking a quick gander here, kind of running down here. The Desert Swarm Gump out there handing a 42 to 7 loss to uh, 42 to 7 handy win over the uh, Washington football team, aka the Commanders now. Taking a look down here, looks like the Son of Sabins handled up uh, the, you know, hand up the, oh my God, can't talk. Sons of Sabin handed up a handy defeat to the 10 Wolverines out there. Sure shot, eked out a win over the Cardiac Cats. Definitely did handle, uh, you know, the Danger Chickens handed out Denver Bronco, handed the Denver Broncos a nice little loss out there. Scroll on on down here. We had a wondrous defeat. The Fighting Penguins decided to finally put on their gloves and hand out a, a loss to the Spud Nados, knocking them down off of a pedestal there, which is is pretty awesome. I, I know that they were on a track to, to to do some good. I thought that they actually might have the Fighting Penguins the way that he had been going, but uh, they improve out there. Taking a quick gander here, tough loss with the Brady Gagas, bringing them down against Kansas City. And then, of course, the Jackson Drive eking out of victory there against the um, – eking out of victory against your Kraft Mac and Sheets. So let's uh, bind up here because I know we have a couple of games to get through. So with the Sons of Saban fighting off against the 10 Wolverines here, Offensive yard gain, pretty hefty difference there. There was absolutely zero momentum going on there with the rushing game. Offensive passing, it looks like that's where it was heavily favored. Quite a few extra first downs. Uh, the punt and kick return yards, not too handy there. Not that big of a difference against the total yards gained uh, with the turnovers. Very, very decisive gain there for 3-0. and With the third down conversions actually on par with the fourth down conversion going to our 10 Wolverines. Taking a quick gander here, red zone percentages, just a tad bit better there. Uh, six offensive touchdowns going the way of Sons of Saban, whereas only two getting it on for the 10 Wolverines. Then with the uh, red zone offensive field goals, not much re reaping up there. Fairly pe unpenalty driven game, which is pretty awesome sauce out there. And then the time of possession is actually fairly fairly heavily let's go and take a look at the 10 wolverines first matthew stafford at a 66.3 percent rating 251 two touchdowns three interceptions 26 long and a sack out there Tua gets some reps in although he's a 39.5 looks like he just had an absolute garbage of a day out there no yards no interceptions um nothing acts uh yeah he had one passing attempt that went incomplete uh, so, all right, I, I, I didn't know I could go that far over there. But, yeah, it looks like it was a pretty pretty hot garbage day. Let's go ahead and uh, jump things up here to the rushing yard. Raheem Mustert, Mustert uh, 8 for 24 with a 3 average, nothing doing out there. But uh, look at this. Cooper Cup had a handoff that actually went for a fumble, and Javante Williams had a touchdown. So Cooper Cup dropping the ball on probably what was two jet sweeps out there. Let's go ahead and dive into the receiving yards out here. Cooper Cup being the most productive, basically an 11.4 average of 7 for 8. Bra uh, Brandon Cooks out there, 5 for 58. Robert Woods putting in some work, 4 for 48. I'm noticing a little bit of a trend here where uh, looking at as many as catches as yards, uh, except for Raheem Moore said he needed about seven more yards to create that average. Going on good there. Elliot Moore, Kyle Pitts, and Cody McElroy. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Spreading the love out there. Spread the absolute love. So let's go ahead and jump back up to the passing and head on over to the Dolphins. Looks like Dak Prescott had a beautiful rating of 132.5, 283 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions, no sacks, uh, 25 of 28 with an 89% passer, 25 of 28. That's, that's a pretty impressive st stat. I'm going to have to keep looking over there. Looks like Nick Chubb did a lot of the work out there. 21 attempts, 83 yards, Four yards average, throwing down four of the touchdowns on the day with no fumbles uh, and, and everything else looking good out there. Looks like Austin Eckler as well as Dak Prescott did some scrambling. Diving into the receiving, Terry McLaren did a bolt, did actually a decent amount of work and, and shared the load with David Njoku, doing some awesome saws work about there. Uh, just about, you know, 
had less receptions but more yards. And then uh, C.D. Lamb putting in some good work, as well as Jamar Chase, Ashin, Adam Shaheen, and then Nick Chubb with a little bit of a not not so much love out there, but you know, you know that that's that's fairly decent. And then if we go ahead and just jump right into the next game on the docket here, because this one we actually have three games going on. We have the Spud Nados taking on the Fighting Penguins. The Fighting Penguins, hundred extra yards, basically. Like wow. 120 extra yards out there. Absolutely nothing going there for the Spud Natos when it comes to rushing and or passing. Uh, looks like, though, not not too crazy on the offensive yards. I mean, that's usually a pretty decent day for, for a rusher. But the offensive passing yards, usually that's that's upwards of 300 or so. Uh, you know, when we take a look at some decent quarterbacks out there, which uh, K1 probably needs to step up his game, and you're damn right I'm throwing that in your face there, Mark. The offensive first downs, like, Wow, that's that's pretty big. That is massive. The total yards gained fairly even there, just just about an extra eighty yards. Uh, two tu- two turnovers for the Spud Nados. They did Spud Nado did have the upper hand on the third down conversions, but nothing on the fourth down. But that tells me that uh, you know the Fighting Penguins were out there scrapping for everything they could get. I do like that uh, they were 100% in the offensive, the red zone offensive uh, percentage out there, but looks like they, they barely got in the red zone to score their three field goals, which put an impressive day for her kicker. And then penalties yards pretty low here, but that is a, that is a heck of a substantial difference there when it comes to time of possession. Let's go ahead and just take a look here at your fighting penguins. Kyler Murray, 90.6, 200 yards, touchdown, no sacks, no interceptions. That's looking good. 20 of 32 for a 62%. So that's uh, that's that's looking pretty good. We throw in there James uh, James Conner doing a decent actually amount of the work with the rushing, and then Kyler Murray putting his own uh, scrambling attempts. That's probably how he almost he, he got away with zero sacks. And then Chase Edmonds uh, throwing in some good work. It looks like the ball was getting handed off fairly, fairly well, as well as some um, some fullbacks. Probably that was one of the first downs that they needed for a fourth down conversion. And then probably just a uh, you know a oh what's that what's that called here the uh, the jet sweep. Taking a look at this receiving core, DeAndre Hopkins had five for sixty. Not too many attempts out here, but it looks like when they when Kyler Murray did throw the ball, he he went out nice and good. Tyreek Hill four for five, Michael Thomas six for forty five, George Kittle just one reception at fifteen yards, Jasaki one for eleven, Chase Edmonds two for ten, James Conner one for eight. So spread the love, spread the spread the rock around. That that definitely looks good on you. Let's head on over to Spud Nato where Josh Allen went an abysmal thirty two point seven. 159 yards, two interceptions, two sacks. I don't know why they didn't put Russell Wilson in there. I mean, look at that. 12 for 27, 44% at 5.9. I mean, I, I could see if maybe he had a quite a few couple completions to start off there. But that, you know, look, if you're, if you're going under 50% of your passes, why not throw Russ in there and let him cook, which, you know, the Broncos are doing this season in the real world. And I don't know how it's going to look when this comes out. I recorded this way earlier on than you would have thought. <laughs> uh, Derek Henry getting the vast majority of the, the rock there, 14 for 53, not too productive. Uh, no fumbles in there. That's good. Aaron Jones getting a couple touches as well as Josh Allen doing some scrambling and looks like a end around for Chris Godwin there. Taking a look at the receiving core. Again, not really a whole heck of a lot. Antonio Brown getting the vast majority of the touches there. Dallas Goddard with two of 30, two for 38. Chris Godwin again, two for 30. Aaron Jones, one for 10. Fant getting a seven yard dump as well as Jerry Judy. So not, not a hundred percent too productive on that end there which is a little sad to see. But let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, Indianapolis Colts, a.k.a. your Jackson Drive, knocking off the the what the Kraft Mac and Sheets, who should have been 5-0 and here. And, you know, that brings us to a very, very interesting point coming up here. Jackson Drive just driving it down the ever-living throat of the Kraft Mac and Sheets, putting a little extra milk in the bowl there, making it soupy and just disgusting for everybody. Because there is there is a perfect percentage of milk to powder ratio that you need, and it sounds like the uh, the Kraft Mac and Cheese just overdid it. 360 total offensive yards, 111 offensive yards gained, passing yards almost doubled out there. 18 first downs 
to their 12, 37 punt returns, 84. These two I really don't care about, but the total yards gained looks like uh, it was a slobber knocker, as they would say. They did have them in turnovers, which I, I will give the Kraft Mac and Cheats. And no turnovers is good. Looks like they weren't really maybe able to capitalize any on any of it. Half the third down conversions, the Kraft Mac and Cheats were trying to get something going there with the two fourth down conversions. Though they did have 100% in the offense, red zone offensive per, percentages out there. Two touchdowns uh, on the Dra- Jackson Drive, one touchdown for the Kraft Mac and Cheats. 40 penalty yards against 45. That is not too bad. But look at that time of possession. 40, 41 minutes versus 35. That's that's pretty substantial here. So let's go ahead and uh, do a quick dive here. Let's actually start off with the Kraft Mac and Cheats here. Looks like uh, 82.2, 88.2% passer rating, 160 yards, touchdowns, no interceptions, 27. Took two sacks, though. Rodgers not getting any touches out there. 18 for 29 at 62%. Not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, De- Devin Singletary getting the rock plenty of times out there, but not a whole heck of a lot going with 20 carries for 54 yards. Patty Mahomes doing some scrambling out there as well, too, which tells me that the, the offense just was not able to get that line moving. And then when we come over here, a lot of good touches by DK Metcalf as well as Devontae Smith. That's something that you like to see about a 10-yard average. Kind of wish they would have gotten the ball a little bit more. Devontae Parker having a pretty decent productive day, almost 3 for 40, which would have been great. Devin Singletary getting a few shovel passes out there probably. Mark Andrews, Naeem Hines uh, looking fairly good. Alvin Kamara not doing much, although Kamara I do believe is the backup. Oh, don't really care about that. Let's go and check out, whoops, our Jackson Drive. Jalen Hurts, 86.6. What was what was 88.2 for Patty? 86.6 for 249 from Hurts out there. A little bit longer, but he took five sacks. The Kraft Mac and Sheets just bombarded. Must have thrown some amazing blitz packages at the uh, the Jackson Drive to get five freaking sacks. 19 of 31 at 61 percent that's not it's not really much better i'm kind of surprised that i was looking that i was given i was given jackson drive some some extra special points out there yeah hey extra special points shaquan barkley out there 27 attempts at 72 yards looks like uh jalen hurts was having a quite a few scrambles out there no wonder they got sacked five times the Kraft mac and sheets were spooking the drives offensive line out there and then we have james robinson getting a couple in between handoffs there Devonte adams of course being a big productive member of society like i thought that he always would be seven for 102 and then we've got uh, mike williams three for 59 Debo Samuels, 5 for 55. TJ Hawkinson, 2 for 20. And then Shaquan Barkley, 2 for 13. Some uh, shovel passes out there. And, I mean, that that essentially rounds us out there for Week 5. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we got coming up at Week 6 here. Looks like the 10 Wolverines are going to have a decent little game out there. Sons of Saban might be going 5-0. and The Chiefs, that's not a big game. Jackson Drive taking on the Texans. We got the shore shots taken on the Bears. That should probably be a decent win for the Packers. We got the Kraft Mac and Sheets taken on the Chargers. Looking at the Fighting Penguins going against the Browns, as well too as looks like uh, I my Danger Chickens have an absolute chance to shine and uh, go five and zero against the Seahawks. And then the Brady Gagas are going against the Titans. I think the Sons of Saban are nope. That's right. So this is what I wanted to come up with here, uh, because taking a look here at the co-hosts or the hosts of the podcasts, Jackson Drive is three and two. Desert Swarm are three and two. Your Danger Chickens are five and zero. Oh. The Mac and Cheats are four and one, and your Fighting Penguins are four and one as well too. And then over on into the listeners division, the Shore Shots are three and two. Your Sons of Saban are five and zero. Oh. Ten Wolverines are two and three. The Spudnados are three and two. Don't worry, baby doll. You'll get them next week. And Brady Gaga is at two and three with the Sons of Saban and the Danger Chickens being the last two head to head at five and oh, we will. Let's take a look here and see if the Jaguars can knock off the Sons of Saban or will it be the Seahawks or as Mark loves to refer to them, the Sea Chickens knocking off the Danger Chickens at five and oh, tune in next week for week six.